we'll start with a definition first. A literal equation is going to be an equation. We already know what equations are. They have equal signs. All right, it's going to involve two or more variables. All right, now that, that's not to say that there's not going to be numbers. There could be some numbers. There's obviously going to be some add, subtract, multiply, and divide in there. All right, but what we're going to do is we're going to solve a literal equation for one of the variables. So we're going to pick one variable. We're going to make sure that one is on either the left or the right hand side of the equation all by itself. And everything else, all the other letters, all the other numbers are going to go to the other side of the equation. All right. We do this when we cross the equal sign. I don't know if you ever thought of this, but every time you cross the equal sign, you do the opposite. All right. If we see minus four, what do we do? We add four to both sides. All right. If we see multiplication by two, then we divide both sides of the equation by two. So we do inverse operations. If you can solve an equation with numbers in it, you can also solve an equation that is a literal equation. Okay. So let's take a look at something as simple as just a one step equation that we have been solving for a long, long time. All right. We have already been doing equations that look like, say, x plus four equals negative 10. All right, we have, that's a one-step equation. We all know that we're supposed to subtract four from both sides of the equation. We know that four minus four on this left-hand side gets crossed out, okay? And then we do the math over here on the right side because we can, because it's two numbers. So we know that then X equals a negative 14. All right, now what we did there was we solved for X. All right, up to now, we've just said solve the equation, but we literally solve for X because it was the only letter in there. All right, now, if I do this exact same thing, but instead of having numbers, I put other letters there, all right, then I could, I wouldn't even have to have an X. I could put an A here. I could do plus B, and then I could say equals C. And then I could say solve for A, all right? In these equations, I have to tell you what letter you're gonna solve for because there's no numbers in there, right? So I'm solving for A, all right? But over here, I solved for X, all right? Now, doesn't this look like the same thing? I'm solving for whatever's in this position. I'm adding another number or a letter and I'm setting it equal to another one, all right? So if over here, I did the opposite to this right here. I'm going to do the opposite to this right here. So it says plus B. So the opposite of adding B is subtracting B. So I'm going to subtract B. I'm going to subtract B. All right, now B minus B, just like the four minus four over here crossed out, B minus B is going to cross out. Okay, those are going to go away. Now, I can't do the math over here. Over here, I could look at that and go, oh yeah, that's negative 14. I can't do that over here because I don't know what C is. I don't know what B is. But if I choose to write it horizontally so that it makes a little bit more sense, over here we brought the x down because that's what we were solving for. So we're going to bring the a down. All right. And then since I can't really subtract this, I'm just going to write c minus b. All right. It's the exact same thing. Over here I could do the math. Over here I can't do the math. So I'm just going to show the person what I would have done if I would have known what those numbers were. And that's what a literal, this is what a literal equation looks like. All right, so all of the things that you already know how to solve, one-step equations, two-step equations, X on both sides, all right, all we're going to do is maybe replace them with all letters. I wouldn't have to have all letters in here. I could have had, that could have been a number, that could have been a number. I could have put something in front, all right, but we're going to do the exact same thing we've been doing. There's just going to be lots of letters and lots of numbers, okay? All right, so let's uh, let's go up to a two-step equation. All right, let's look at something like a, a four um, a plus a y equals an m. Okay, and then let's say it says solve for a. All right, so I'm solving for this right here. All right, but doesn't that kind of look like a two-step equation that we have done in the past? A number in front of an X and then plus some other number or plus something and then equals something else. That kind of looks like your standard two-step equation. All right, if at any point in time, this is too confusing, 
there's a, a problem solving technique called use simpler numbers. All right, if you don't like all these extra letters in here, all right, throw in and make up some numbers. All right, there's nothing that says I can't say, okay, I can't do this problem, but I might be able to do a 4x plus a 2 equals a 10. And I could just randomly make up numbers there. All right, I'm, everyone in the room, I know you guys can solve this. All right, you would subtract 2. All right, and then you would do the math over here. You'd get a 4x equals an 8. And then you would divide by 4 and divide by 4, and you get x equals 2. If you can solve this, you can solve this. The very first thing we did was the opposite of that right there. So the opposite of adding y is subtracting y. So I'm going to subtract y and I'm going to subtract y. All right, just like the 2 minus 2 fell out, the y minus y is going to fall out. I cannot do the math over here because I don't know what m is and I don't know what y is. But I can, just like I took the 4x and brought it down, I can take the 4a and bring it down. And then I can take this and write it out horizontally, m minus y. And then what did we do over here? We took the 4 and divided both sides by 4. All right, well, I've got 4 times a. Opposite of multiplying by 4 is dividing by 4. So I can divide by 4. And just like those 4s crossed out, this 4 is going to cross out. I'm going to divide this whole entire thing by 4 as well. Pull this away so that it's not cluttered and doesn't look junky. I was supposed to solve for a, here's a. All right, now just rewrite this, m minus y all over four. So you're not gonna get a equals two or b equals six. All right, you're gonna have weird looking answers, okay? That maybe doesn't make any sense to you. All right, my suggestion is if you have anything over here and you don't know how to solve it because it's too many letters, too confusing, replace all the extra letters with some numbers and then see if you recognize how to do it when there's plain numbers. All right, that's a problem solving technique called using simpler numbers. Okay. All right, so that's what a two step equation looks like. All right, let's throw in one um, that might have a fraction in it. All right, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and put the solve for on top. Let's put solve for um, H. <coughs> now I'm going to put a capital A in this one. One half B H. All right, so we have not really addressed capital letters versus small letters. Okay, if it is a capital letter in the problem, you have to keep it a capital letter. So when you're putting answers in Math Excel, you're gonna have to pay attention to that and use caps, okay? If it's capital letter, it stays capital. If it's a smaller case letter, it stays smaller case, okay? Now, this says solve for H, okay? So I'm solving for H, all right? But before I do that, if I just look at this, capital A from middle school usually meant what in geometry? Capital A was area, yeah. One half base times height. All right, area of a triangle, okay? So can they give you a formula that you recognize? Yes, all right? So the first two examples I did were just random letters. They didn't, they didn't mean anything, but this one is the formula for the area of a triangle, all right? I can solve it for H. All right, now let's go through. All right, let's do one thing at a time. This is one half being multiplied by the B, being multiplied by the H. All right, when there were fractions in here, what did we do? We multiplied by the, yeah, the denominator or we re, re multiplied by the reciprocal to get rid of the fraction. All right, if you recall, I'm gonna do one over here. We had things like two thirds X equals um, say eight. And then what did we do? We multiplied by that reciprocal so that that would go away. And then we multiplied that by the reciprocal as well. Okay, so that was the little trick that we had used when we were solving equations that had fractions in them. So I'm going to get rid of the fraction first. I'm going to multiply by the two over one and over here, two over one. Okay, so the one half is going to go away. I'm going to clean it up. Two over one, same thing as two, right? So two times A really on that side is just a two capital A. I still have the B and the H. I'm still trying to solve for that H. It's B times H. What's the opposite of multiplying by B? Divide. 
divide by B. So I'm going to divide by B. I'm going to divide by B. All right, Bs are going to cross out. All right, and then again, I'm going to come away from that line and I'm going to clean everything up. I'm going to write a two capital A over a little B is equal to H. And I, H is on the right-hand side and that's okay. I solved this equation for H. So what are we doing? We're taking everything else in the equation except for the H and we're moving it to the other side. And every time we cross the equal sign, we do the inverse operation, okay? All right, good so far? All right, now other things that you could remember from middle school, all right, was proportions. Okay, proportion was what? Two fractions said equal to each other, right? Like, so you did ones that were like, uh, maybe say two over three is equal to X over 15. And then they asked you to figure out what X was. All right, well, most of you could just look at that. What's X gonna be in this one? Yeah, that's gonna be 10. All right, however, when you couldn't figure it out, I'm hoping that you were taught to do something called cross multiply down, all right, which I don't know if you were or not, but there's this thing called cross multiply down. All right, I draw the little arrows like that. I wouldn't expect you to draw the arrows on your paper all the time, but I'm just showing for demonstration purposes, three times X is three X. So I can write a three X down, all right? Two times 15 is 30. And then what do I have right there? A one step equation, which I can now divide by three and divide by three. 30 divided by three is 10. We already knew the answer was 10. However, if it wouldn't have come out even, then we would have needed to do this cross multiply down thing. Okay, so cross multiply down. So if you've never seen that, that's an easy way to do that. Now, why did I introduce this? Because I can have a literal equation that looks like a proportion. All right, so a literal equation that looks like a proportion. And instead of having just one letter, I can have, I can have four letters, okay? So I don't know, let's do an M over an A equals, well, let's do a C over an N. But it looks like a proportion because it looks like two fractions set equal to each other. Two fractions set equal to each other. All right, let's say we are going to solve um, for M. Okay, I get to make that up every time. Whatever letter I want to solve for. All right, so I'm solving for this letter. But since I don't know what any of the numbers are, like over here, we could just look at that and go, oh yeah, X is 10 because we could see the numbers. I can't do that here because they don't make sense and I don't know what the numbers are. So on this, I have to cross multiply down. So when I multiply this way, A times C, just gonna squish them together because they're two letters. So I'm gonna write an A and a C. All right, when I cross multiply down this way, then I'm gonna take the M times the N, squish it together. Okay, now I'm still trying to solve for this M. I need M by itself on one side of the equation. All right, well, the M is being multiplied by N. Opposite of multiplying by N is dividing by N. So if I divide by N and I divide by N, those two Ns are gonna cross off. M then is by itself on the right-hand side, which is what we want. Okay, so over here on the left, a C over N, all lowercase letters, all right, is equal to lowercase M. So uh, any type of equation that you have seen up to this point, all right, we can do it as a literal equation. It can have all letters. A literal equation can have letters and numbers as well. Okay, let's do another pretty common type of equation that we have done in the past. All right. Everybody good so far? No questions so far. Okay. All right. So let's look again at the kind that we have already done. All right. We have done questions like x minus three all over five 
is equal to say a negative 10. All right, we've done equations like this. This is not a literal equation. This is just a regular equation that we're solving for x. All right, we focused on this as we've got a numerator divided by five. So the first step has to be multiply by five because we want to get rid of this fraction on this left-hand side. So multiply by five and multiply by five. That makes the five just go away. It makes that fraction on the left-hand side go away. So x minus three equals a uh, negative 50. And then that's just a nice little one-step equation where we add three to both sides. And again, this is one we've done in the past, so not a literal equation. We get down to what, an x equal a negative 47. So we were solving for x, okay? If I turn this now into a literal equation that looks like the exact same thing, I might have an a here and then minus, I could even have a number. Let's go ahead and put a number in there, seven all over a C is equal to an M. And let's say that we're going to solve for A. Okay, I set this up exactly looking just like this. This is X and we solve for X on this one. Over here, we're gonna solve for A, all right? They should look very, very similar to you. This is what we're solving for. And then I'm subtracting a number. I have a letter on the bottom equal to another letter, but that's okay. So if my first thing over here was to multiply by what I was dividing by, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So what am I gonna do both sides? Times it by C. Yep, so I'm gonna times a C and the C's are gonna cross out over here. And I'm gonna times it by a C here. Now, usually I show the dot up here on this step. All right, just like I showed the dot here, but then over here, we did the math. Over here, when I rewrite this, I'm gonna drop that dot because that's kind of tacky. I'm gonna bring down that A minus seven. And since I know multiplication of letters just means squish them together, I'm just gonna do an MC. Okay, we're solving for that A. Okay, so what do I do to both sides? Plus seven, okay? So I can plus seven and I can plus seven. All right, obviously minus seven plus seven goes away, which is what we want over there. I can't really add these, but I can write it nice and neat and I can write it horizontally. So I can say A is equal to the MC plus a seven. So I have put A on the left-hand side of the equation by itself. All right, I can't emphasize enough. You're not gonna be able to do these unless you show your work. All right, you write things down. Yes, Carter. Actually, no, it doesn't. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's an excellent question. Okay, so his question was, could the C and the M be mixed around? Yes, it could because what? We can multiply numbers in any order. All right, could I even have switched the adding over here? Yes, I could have. Seven plus CM or MC. So there are some variations in what your answer can look like. Yes. Okay, good question. Good question. All right, anything else? 